Hello everyone. Welcome to another lecture from Think Surgery. Today we are going to talk about trauma to neck and its management. So, why do we need to know about neck trauma? Trauma to neck can be extremely challenging to deal with as neck contains many vital structures. Most of the time, these pose a diagnostic and therapeutic dilemma in emergency room. So, it will be very helpful if we have an idea about how to manage neck trauma. At first, we will study the anatomy of neck. This will help us to understand the topic better. For this particular topic, we will divide the neck into three zones. Zone 1, Zone 2 and Zone 3. Coming to Zone 1. First, we need to draw two lines. One at the level of cricoid cartilage and the other at the level of clavicle. Zone 1 lies between the clavicles and the cricoid cartilage. We can clearly see that the zone 1 contains a lot of structures. The structures are innominate vessels which arises from superior vena cava, the origin of common carotid artery, subclavian vessels lying just below the clavicles, vertebral arteries running parallel to the common carotid artery, brachial plexus, trachea, esophagus, apex of lung and the thoracic duct. When we look at the diagram, we can understand that surgical access and exposure can be extremely difficult in this zone because of the presence of clavicle and bony structures of thoracic inlet. Next, we move on to zone 2. For marking zone 2, we have to draw two lines once again. One at the level of cricoid cartilage and the other one at the level of angle of mandible. Zone 2 is defined as the area lying between the cricoid cartilage and the angle of mandible. The following structures are located in zone 2. The carotid artery and vertebral arteries, the internal jugular veins, trachea and esophagus. This zone has comparatively easy access for clinical examination and surgical exploration. It is the largest zone and the most commonly injured in neck. After completing zone 1 and zone 2, it is time to move on to zone 3. For that too, we have to draw two lines. One at the level of angle of mandible and the other one at the level of base of skull. The area between these two lines is going to make up zone 3. Zone 3 contains the distal vertebral artery and carotids along with pharynx. So what are the mechanisms of neck trauma? There are three major mechanisms. Blunt trauma, penetrating trauma, near hanging or strangulation. Blunt trauma includes motor vehicle accidents and sports injuries. Here we need to be aware about something called as delayed presentation of laryngeal, pharyngeal and vascular injuries, which means these injuries can manifest as signs and symptoms at a time which is later than the time of incidence of the injury. Coming to penetrating trauma, penetrating trauma is less common compared to blunt trauma. About 5-10% to of all the neck trauma is actually due to penetrating injury. There are basically two basic modalities that is gunshot wound and stab wound. But there is something called as a definition of a penetrating wound. So what exactly is a penetrating wound? Penetrating wound is a wound in which platysma is violated. So only if platysma is violated, we will call the wound as a penetrating wound. I would like to state three important factual points that we need to know about neck injuries. Mortality from penetrating neck injury is about 10%, which is pretty high. Most common cause of death from penetrating neck trauma is vascular injury. The leading cause of delayed mortality 
in case of neck trauma is esophageal injury. The problem with neck injuries is that within neck there are a lot of vital structures and these vital structures are adjacent to each other. So we must be aware that an innocuous appearing wound may actually have the potential to cause immediate or delayed life threatening complications. A special note about zone 1 injuries. Zone 1 is a dangerous area and injuries are potentially lethal. There is a potential for injury to following important structures. The great vessels, mediastinum, cervical and thoracic esophagus. Zone 1 injury carries a high mortality. While studying about trauma to neck, we need to be aware of something called as the hard signs. Hard signs are those which suggests presence of serious injuries that needs immediate attention or intervention. Hard signs can be divided into two groups which are signs suggestive of vascular injury and signs suggestive of esophageal injury. So what are the signs suggestive of vascular injury? They can be understood from this cartoon. The hard signs are as follows. Rapidly expansile or pulsatile hematoma which is suggestive of active bleeding. Severe hemorrhage or difficult to control bleeding. Shock which is refractory to fluid resuscitation. Decreased pulse volume. Vascular bruit or thrill. This happens due to disruption of continuity to the laminar flow of blood causing turbulence which is heard as a bruit or thrill and lastly any neurological deficit. After learning about hard signs of vascular injury we need to understand the hard signs of esophageal injury. They are massive hemoptysis, severe hematemesis and respiratory distress. Now that we know about hard signs, there must be something called as a soft signs. Soft signs of penetrating neck trauma are minor hemoptysis or hematemesis, dysphonia and dysphagia, subcutaneous or mediastinal air, which can be made out from palpable crepitus and chest x-ray respectively. When it comes to history taking, we need to know some important points. They are the timing of injury at what time the injury actually has happened. The agent used which can be a knife, a gun or even a road traffic accident. We also need to be aware of any other associated injuries which happen to any other body part because those also need to be looked at. Examination is very important in case of a trauma to neck and proper documentation is absolutely necessary. Couple of important points. We must know the location of the wound, the number of wounds, entry or exit wounds and nearness to the vital structures. Neck must be examined and any active hemorrhage, hematoma, echimosis and any anatomical distortion like a deviated trachea must be noted. Subcutaneous emphysema or any bubbling of air from wound should be taken extremely seriously as it may signify a tracheal injury. We must also not forget to auscultate to look for a carotid bruit. Coming to investigations, the first investigation that we need to talk about is chest radiography and x-ray of neck. X-ray of neck can be taken in AP view and lateral view. Chest radiography is done to rule out conditions like hemothorax, pneumothorax, and pneumomediastinum. The next investigation that we need to talk about is an important one that is angiography. At this stage we need to know about two important methods of doing an angiography. They are conventional angiography which is also known as digital subtraction angiography and CT angiography. With the help of angiography we can see the damage to the blood vessel. When the intimal layer of the blood vessel is damaged, it is raised as a flap. 
it is called as an intimal flap when the flow is cut off across the blood vessel it is seen as a flow cut off obviously when the adventitial layer of the blood vessel is damaged it can give rise to something called as a pseudo aneurysm which is nothing but a small outpouching in the outer wall of blood vessel any form of angiography will help us to pick up these changes within a blood vessel which has faced trauma coming to conventional angiography in this particular technique a blood vessel for example femoral artery is taken and catheter is inserted within the blood vessel following catheter insertion a contrast material is injected within the blood vessel to opacify the blood vessel this is a highly sensitive technique having sensitivity of approximately 99% it is therefore the gold standard investigation however it is an invasive investigation and is time consuming therefore it cannot be used in an emergency setup that is why ct angiography is preferred nowadays as it is rapid minimally invasive and requires only an intravenous contrast injection not an intra arterial contrast injection the next investigation that we are going to talk about is esophagography initially a radio opaque contrast is consumed by the patient any breach in continuity of the esophagus is evidenced by extravasation of the contrast material nowadays ct esophagography is also available once extravasation is confirmed upper gi endoscopy can be undertaken to document and describe the injury initial assessment in case of neck trauma is very important as with all other trauma here too we must follow the atls guidelines this is followed by inspection of neck first we must assess whether platysma is breached or not if platysma is not breached then the wound is just a superficial wound if platysma is breached then by definition it is a penetrating neck wound airway management in case of neck trauma is must and is obviously a part of atls protocol at first we must look for signs of airway injury we had learned about them previously they are hoarseness strider dyspnea subcutaneous emphysema bubbling from the wound and large volume of hemoptysis a difficult intubation must be anticipated and various sizes of endotracheal tubes and laryngoscopes must be arranged blind insertion of a tube into lacerated tracheal segment must be avoided as it can create a false lumen or a false passage it can also convert a partial laceration into a complete one in case a difficult intubation is expected we can also go ahead with fiber optic guided tube insertion in circumstances like neck trauma which are associated with facial trauma tracheostomy insertion may be required next we are going to learn about how to deal with vascular injury exsanguination is responsible for 50% of the mortality in cases of neck trauma initially application of pressure over the wound may help however if direct application of pressure fails to stop the bleeding then we can try giving a tamponade using a foley's catheter for this foley's catheter is inserted through the wound after insertion bulb of foley's is inflated and traction is given this provides tamponade and can temporarily stop the bleeding in case of zone 1 injury a cardiothoracic surgeon must be involved as a sternotomy or a thoracotomy may need to be performed in case of an arterial injury to a big artery like a common carotid artery or an internal carotid artery repair of the defect is preferred over ligation of the artery there are many methods for repair of the arteries which include lateral arteriography or patching the defect with a ptfe graft to conclude the topic we are going to go through an algorithm of actually treating a penetrating neck injury the algorithm that we are going to discuss is going to be called as no zone approach algorithm the first step is to decide whether there is any penetrating neck injury or not penetrating neck injury is defined by the violation of platysma 
which means if platysma is breached then the neck injury is a penetrating neck injury after establishing that the injury is indeed penetrating neck injury we are going to look for two things that is hard signs or hemodynamic instability if hard signs or hemodynamic instability is present we are first going to apply pressure and give tamponade over the wound and secure the airway our aim should be to shift the patient to the or as soon as possible for an early surgical repair obviously because there is hemodynamic instability if hard signs or hemodynamic instability is absent then we can go ahead with ct angiography as we have some time in hand if ct angiography comes out as positive which means there is any extra vasation or any evidence of any other vascular injury then we can go ahead with directed angiography to locate where the problem is so that we can do a surgical repair we must also perform bronchoscopy or esophagoscopy to find out if there is any defect in the continuity of the airway or the esophagus following that we must go ahead with surgical repair if ct angiography also comes out as negative then we can observe the patient With that we conclude the topic of neck injury don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel you can also follow my telegram channel in which i do put up regular surgery mcqs to solve the link is given in the video description thank you